Good evening, church. I said good evening, church. You know, maybe we'll rise to our feet. I, I want to encourage you guys on one thing that has to become a reality. On one thing that has to become our mindset. You know, Jesus, we call him the groom. When we come into his holy place, I believe there's no conversation greater than his face. There has to be a reverence that we as the children of God, we carry to our king. That when we enter, the second the ministers enter the stage, there has to be an attention that now fixated on Jesus. That every conversation has to cease without me having to tell you. Because you didn't come to converse, you come to behold the king. There has to be a reverence. I pray that we'll be a generation that reverence God again. We call him the king of glory. We call him the king of glory. I tell my friends, I don't, I've, I've not come to play church. I've not come for another meeting. I've not come for another service. I tell Jesus that every time I see you, I want to worship you. I want to behold you like I'm seeing you for the very first time. So tonight, I want to encourage you to fix your eyes only on Jesus. There's no one more important in this room but Jesus. There's no one more important, no one more beautiful than Jesus. So in your own way, begin to love on Jesus. We've got to be a bride that learn how to love on the groom. Just begin to love on Jesus in your own way. Spirit of God, we welcome you tonight. We say, come have your way in this meeting tonight. We've come to encounter the living God. We've come to feast at the table of the living God. He has prepared a table for every single one of us. I'm not satisfied until I see my generation beholding Jesus. Begin to pray for your generation, for your family. You got son There has to be a hunger that comes from you. That will say, I'm not satisfied until my family is changed. I'm not satisfied until my church is changed. I'm not satisfied until the United Kingdom beholds His glory. Oh, King of Glory, have your way tonight. Begin to speak in the heavenly language. Oh, Ropa Setere Kia Barokea Riki and Dere Sitaro Kabaya Setera Kabaya. Oh, Holy Spirit, take us deeper tonight. Take us deeper tonight. Take us deeper tonight. You know, I want you as a symbol of faith, take your hand and put it out and say, Holy Spirit, take my hand and take me deeper. Holy Spirit, take my hand and take me deeper. Say with me, Holy Spirit, take my hand and take me deeper. Holy Spirit, take my hand and take me deeper. Say, Holy Spirit, take my hand and take me deeper. You have to, listen, we have to be a people that are led by the Spirit. We don't lead the Spirit, the Spirit leads us. Oh, Holy Spirit, fall afresh, fall afresh. Fall afresh, fall afresh. Oh, Rokia, Baba, Siere, Kia. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, yeah. We see
see you, we see you in your fullness, in your glory. Yes, begin to sing your own song. That's amazing. Yes, that's beautiful. Yes, love on anybody. Fall afresh on us. Fall afresh on us. As the worship team gets ready to come on, Father, we give you permission. We say fall afresh on us tonight. On the count of three, I want you to give Jesus a worthy shout of praise. One, two, three, Jesus! Jesus, we love you. We bless your name. We thank you for today. For this is the day the Lord has made. Can we say that? Can you say, this is the day the Lord has made. And I, point to yourself, say I. Say I. Call your name in that and say I, I day, will rejoice and be glad in it. Now give him a joyful shout, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to him. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
see chains falling down. You are worthy. I see chains falling down. I see walls falling down. You are worthy of the glory and the honor. You are worthy of the glory and the honor. You are worthy of the glory and the
high tonight. Just say in your own words, just cry out to him. Just give him thanks, give him praise. Let's just hear a shout of praise for the Lord tonight. Jesus, you are worthy, you are high. We lift you high tonight. We just praise you. For you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are the one on the throne. We just lift you high tonight. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you have done. We just glorify your name. We just thank you, Lord, as we've just sung, you made a way where there was no way. And Lord, we just thank you that you're breaking chains tonight, that even as we've been singing, as we've been glorifying your name, the chains have been falling off. Lord, that things have been breaking in the spirit. Lord, that you have just been doing a work that where we could see in the natural that there was no way. So we just thank you, Lord, for everything you've been doing and everything that you're going to continue to do. We thank you, Lord, and we just... We just make space for you tonight. Lord, we say, have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in this moment. Have your way in our hearts. And we just, we just in this moment, we gaze upon you. We gaze upon you because it's all about you. You are the highest. You are the one to be glorified. You are the one who is worthy. We thank you, Lord. Yeah, just sing out to him. Just sing out to him in your own words in this moment. Just draw close to him. Tell him how much you love him. There's a really sweet presence in the room. Just draw close. Tell him how much you love him. Just let him touch you in this moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just see his presence just touching people all over the room. Just linger a little bit longer. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're touching lives here and now, that you're just resting on people, your presence. Thank you, Lord, that even in this moment, you're bringing healing as your presence is just resting on lives in this place, a touch of your healing, your healing's in the room. So we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your sweet presence that is in the room. And just as we go into the next part of this service, we just go into your word. Lord, we just say rest on us. Continue to rest on us. And we just, Lord, we just remain our focus on you. We say touch us, speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. Make our hearts be fertile ground for everything that you want to say to us. Help us, Lord, we know that you speak, but help us to listen to everything that you have for us and to walk away changed. 
in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Yeah, let's just uh, give the Lord another shout of praise. And then do take your seats. Well, welcome everybody. That was... Uh, about you for just can feel the Holy Spirit and all over this room you could just see the presence of God resting on people so we praise God for that and thank you for Pastor Addy and the worship team for leading us got a number of notices for you first of all Pastor John and um, Keisha they're at another service they've gone over to Pastor Keith's church um, for a seminar about sexual fulfillment. Have I got that right? So they are having fun um, over there. So some of the team have gone over um, with them. So that's why they are not here um, this evening. Several notices for you. First of all, do we have anyone who is visiting us for the first time today? No. Yay, we heard you. Welcome. You are very welcome, and we hope that if you're looking for a church, that you will make this our home. I think we've got some slides, um, John. If you um, are new here, or you have been just coming for a while, and you want to get a bit more connected, if you scan that QR code, then someone will give you a call in the week and invite you to our next growth track. Our growth track, I think we've got another slide there, John, for growth track. Our growth track is our new members course. And if you come along to that, our next one's on the 13th of April. Uh, we have a really great day. We'll tell you a bit more about the church, our vision, where we're going. And we get to know you a bit more as well. So we do all sorts of quizzes, a spiritual gifts quiz, personality test. And at the end of the day, we can connect you to any of the ministries or any of the hubs if you want to get a bit more involved. And we hope that on that day, it's not just about information given, but people come away from that day saying that they have encountered God. So it's, we do a bit of prayer ministry with you, and people make friends. And that's what partly, isn't it, we want some fellowship beyond that just grabbing a coffee at the end and a quick hello, but to be able to support one another. So that's Growth Chat we've got coming up, 13th of April. Um, now, next week is Easter, so we've got Good Friday service. Yeah, Clapton's excited. Good Friday, um, we have a service here in the building. I'm assuming that's 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, assuming that's 11 o'clock, so Good Friday here in the building. And then on Easter Sunday, we have 11 o'clock service, and this is going to be really good. It is finished. Yeah. We're going to have a real celebration on Easter Sunday that Jesus not only died, but he rose again from the dead. And I don't know whether any of you have been to our Easter Sunday morning service. Has anyone never been to our Easter morning service? There's going to be quite a few, I think, because we've got a lot of new faces over the course of this year. We will be having our big giveaway. And so there'll be lots of Easter hampers and other prizes. You'll get a raffle ticket on the way in. And it's a service for you to invite your friends to. We'll be preaching the gospel, um, but it will be fun, it will be lively, and they also might win a prize. Now, there is no six o'clock service next Sunday evening. So those of you that only come in the evening, it would be lovely to see you Easter Sunday in the morning at 11. Next notice. Quite a lot to go through um, tonight. We've got a lot going on. Um, men. Yeah. <laughs> we have one man who's excited. <laughs> Games and curry night. Are any men, other men excited about this? Yeah, yeah. Benoni. Um, games and curry night on the 12th of April, 7 o'clock. Um, it's going to be a lot of fellowship, obviously eating curry, games, and I'm told that there's something spiritual as well in there. Um, I think it's disguised, um, but again, book that on Eventbrite if you would like to um, go to that. And then we have our women's event, Warrior. Yeah, a little bit more excitement for that one. Now, this is, you have to book fast if you want to come to this one because there are only 100 tickets available. 
And I think sometimes we have 200, up to 300 people come in on the Friday nights for our warrior events. And so some people are going to be disappointed. But that is because there's going to be bre uh, a brunch and there's also going to be various activities, which I'm told are a surprise. Um, there is a small cost involved with that one to cover the um, food and surprises. Um, so please uh, book that on Eventbrite. It won't be an event that you can just turn up to and come in. You do need a ticket for that one. But that is, I'm excited about that. Then we have, what have we got next? Um, oh, yeah, I just wanted to make a quick plug for our Bible school. Our school of ministry, yeah. You know, we had a really good day. If you were here this morning with um, Apostle Trevor Baker, and he was with us all day at the Bible school yesterday, and Pastor John was sharing this morning that we did this prophetic act with honey at the end of the day, and I know that I was having dreams all night, Esther was having dreams all night, Pastor John was dreaming all night, that we, we really felt like that something, you know, something shifted, and our spiritual senses were being awakened even more as a result of that day yesterday. We are having a fun time at the Bible school. If you would like to be part of it next year, we have opened our bookings for January 2025. So it's a long way off, but the bookings are open. And until the end of March, which is only now the end of next week, there's an early bird discount for booking. So if you know already that you want to do it, um, do fill out your application form, and then we will freeze the fees for you at this year's prices. On the 1st of April, they go up to next year's prices. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, um, see me afterwards, and I can tell you more. Okay, now I think that is all the notices. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Um, so we will receive our tithes and offerings. I don't know whether, ushers, you could um, come with the bags to the front. Thank you. That would be great. Um, I just want to remind us of last week. Last week was Giving Sunday. And... Um, you may remember that we are just believing, we have the faith for the fact that the Lord is going to provide for us the money to extend this building. And we are believing that it's already paid in full, we're believing for it. That there's going to be balconies along there, that wall um, is going to be knocked through. There's going to be balconies over that side as well. We're believing also for the land that is over there. Um, and the house. <laughs> so we're believing for a lot. And then ev eventually another building as well. So we are believing a lot. And um, we've got the faith for it. And last week was Giving Sunday. I just wanted to remind us of the uh, prophetic word that Pastor John shared. And it, it, 2 Chronicles 31, 4 to 8 talks about King Hezekiah. And King Hezekiah um, told the children of Israel to... Um, bring in an offering, to bring in an offering to um, the priests and the Levites, to support the priests and the Levites. And they began to bring their first fruits into the storehouse. And when they did that, they built them up in heaps. And it says in 2 Chronicles 31... Let me find the verse. In the third month, they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. And he shared the prophetic word for this house, that where are we now? We're in the third month. We're in the month of March. And we are believing by the seventh month, the month of July, that these balconies are going to be paid for in full. And we will be sharing an update on how much has come in for Giving Sunday. We're not sharing it yet because there's still money coming in. And there's still pledges and things that are coming in, but we will share an update. But if you would still like to give in that offering, it's not too late. If you could just, um, if you're paying, um, for scanning the barcode and giving online, could you just mark it with building? And then anything that you will give will go to the building fund. So I'm just going to um, pray over you whilst we do that. If you'd like to give this evening, you can give the old-fashioned way by coming to the front. 
um, or you can um, give with the QR code online. Oh, Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all the prophecies over this house. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoken and you have paid in full for the expansion on this building, that you have paid in full for the land. And Lord, I just pray that you will raise our levels of faith in the area of giving. Raise our levels of faith, not only for this physical house, but Lord, you have raised our levels of faith also in our own lives. Lord, that we will get a real revelation of your message on giving, that we can never outgive you. Lord, that when we sow, then we reap. Lord, that this biblical principle that so often we find hard just to grasp, that you don't want us to live in poverty, but you've called us to live in prosperity so that we can give to others. Lord, so we can sow into your kingdom. And Lord, I just pray tonight for a fresh revelation of that, for a deeper revelation of that in each of our lives. And Lord, we pray that if there's any lack in the congregation, Lord, that you will open doorways, that you'll open income streams, that you will um, give people ideas, business ideas. Lord, that you'll open the doors for new, for new ways of um, finances coming into their lives. Lord, we thank you that you are the provider. And it's you that provide more than we can ever imagine and more that we need. So we thank you, Lord. And we thank you for the testimony that's to come. Lord, that in July, that when we look and that we see that actually you've provided, that you've been true to your word and that these expansions to the building are paid in full. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to give and you haven't already done so or you want to tap your phone on the, uh, on the bag at the front, please do. And as we are doing that, I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. And I'm really excited about this, and we'll share more later, but there's been confirmation after confirmation of the word that I believe that Esther is going to be speaking out tonight. Now, Esther, you will have seen up here a lot. Um, she often is leading us in worship, but um, she's also gifted in speaking as well. I know that she's got a word from the Lord tonight. I know what she's going to speak about. I'm really excited about it. So can we just give her a big Elam welcome to Esther. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's just give God a big shout of praise. Lord, we honour you tonight. We honour you tonight, King Jesus. We honour you tonight, King Jesus. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm excited um, for the word God's given me tonight. I believe it's been confirmed multiple times this week on, on what I'm bringing. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I'm actually a little bit nervous because I was working out how many times I've preached and the first time I was about 12 years old and so I count it as a half because I had a 45 minute message and I ended up preaching it in 15 minutes and so that's a half for me and then I preached just before I went to Nigeria I was believing God for 10,000 pounds to go for a month with Apostle Tommy Araimi and um, I preached my first word very nerve-wracking but it was good in Jesus name <laughs> and then um, I preached in India and I had a translator so I had more time to think about what I was going to say and um, <laughs> here I am now but I just want to honour um, a few people before I dive into the word, I want to honour Pastor Ade and the worship team Pastor Ade is a, a big spiritual figure in my life and I honour you and I, I thank you and I love you and I want to honour my parents. I want to, they're currently, like um, Cheryl said, but I love them. They're role models for me. And, um, and I want to honour Jesus for where he's brought me and where he's taken me to and for what he's done in this church. And so we just give him all the glory. Who's ready for the word? <laughs> Everybody say altars. 
I want to talk about two different types of altars that we see in the Bible. And the first one is Solomon's altar. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Chronicles 7, verse 1. And if we can get it on the screen. Um, thank you, media team, for all that you do. Hallelujah. So when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed, I'm going to read from here, and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Next one. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Next. Then the king of all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated to the house of God. Next one. And the priest attended to the services. Actually, no, stop there. Sorry. So Solomon had built an altar and it resulted in him getting the glory. And the in 2 Chronicles 6, it talks about how Solomon built his altar and the sacrifices that he made. And then it's, verse 7 it obviously says, When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifice. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. And I want to tell you that in order to get God's glory, we have to build a temple first. We have to build an altar to allow God to come in. And so I was researching the meaning of Altar, um, the word altar, and the word altar in the Greek means the meeting place between God and the true worshiper. It is the place of consecration, consecration, where the Lord meets and consumes with a sincere believer. And so, in order to meet with God, we need to create that meeting place where God can come in. And so, I want to tell you that we need to build altars. And when you build, sacrifice, and worship the Lord with all that you have, the glory of the Lord will manifest himself. To become glory carriers, we must build an altar to have that meeting place for ourselves and receive what God has for us. But I also want to tell you that God cares about land. You know, we talk about this throughout the whole Bible, and sometimes altars isn't just a spiritual thing, but it is um, a, a physical thing as well. Maybe it's a prayer closet. Maybe it's something, a certain space that you do. It's a piece of land that is dedicated unto the Lord, and that's where he can come in. And so I want to give you three ways to build an altar. The first key to building an altar is to repent. Repent of altars that you have built that weren't onto God. Maybe it's repentance of certain sins. Maybe it's repentance for um, uh, idols that you've created. Maybe it's like Netflix. Maybe it's things that you do instead of praying. Things that you do instead of meeting with God and having that meeting place. And so repentance, walk in holiness. Um, the second key to building an altar unto God is to sacrifice. Be obedient to what God is telling you to do. When God has told you to do something, do it. Maybe it's something to get rid of. And in a in, in sacrifice, you know, in a room where God's glory is in, you'll find that you begin to sow more. I always find in meetings when faith fills the room or when God's glory comes in, all of a sudden I get this urge. I just want to give unto God. I want to give sacrifices unto God. I mean, we see it in 2 Chronicles 7 where Solomon says, I'm, I'm sacrificing 22,000 sheep. Or what was it? 22,000 22, bulls and 120,000 sheep. He offered a sacrifice unto God, and that is order to receive the glory, but it counts as filling, um, it, it counts as getting the altar to receive God's glory. And so what is a sacrifice for you? It may be giving up certain things, giving up relationships, giving up friendships, having that sacrifice in order to have that meeting place with God. And the third key to building an altar unto God is to pray and have a relationship with him. Having a relationship with God, he's a, he's a God of friendship, a father. A, um, a, a, um, he wants to know you. He, he wants you to know him, and he wants to know you. Even though he knows you, he still, he still cares enough 
for you to tell me about your day and, and all that sort of things. Um, and so spending time alone with God, setting, setting aside time. Um, and I love, you know, when in this 7 verse 1 where Solomon says, and when Solomon had finished praying, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And so what happens when God's glory comes in? Do we even know what that looks like? And so it's a lot of points, but I, I want to give you five signs that take place when God's glory comes in the room. And so I don't know if you've heard this, but when I was in Nigeria for the, for the month, um, it was like November, October 2022. And I had seen something that I've never seen about before. I've read about it. I've heard about it. Um, but we were in um, Pangshin in Nigeria. We were at a crusade, um, a big crusade. Uh, it was a glorious time. And we were in the second second day of the, of the crusade. And uh, we were doing baptisms with water bottles. And so we would pour it on our hands and be baptized now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so um, people were falling out and it was a great time. And when we were doing that, I looked up and there was a huge cloud that filled the crusade. And in Nigeria, well, where I was, there was, it was clear skies. Like there was, there was no clouds. There was nothing. Like you literally stepped out of the meeting and then everything was clear. And then you stepped back into the meeting and the whole place was filled with this cloud. And, and as I sat back down, the glory cloud had, dis, uh, had disappeared and it had gone. But we got back to our hotel and um, I hear, I'm in my hotel room and I'm, I'm hearing screaming from the car park, which is outside of the hotel. And so I'm like, well, what's going on? And, and me and my friend who I was with, we began to run to see, because I was like, I do not want to miss what's going on right now. And we were running um, to outside of the, um, the hotel, and everyone just put, like, was just on their knees crying because the glory cloud had come back. And, um, I mean, I, I was in awe because I felt like I had um, missed an opportunity in the crusade where I didn't, I didn't respect what God had done. And in the, when we were outside, I literally fell to my knees and I said, Lord, forgive me for not respecting what you had, what had done. Even though I was busy, I still should have just stopped and embraced what you had done in that place. And so all of us were weeping on the floor for hours. We were, I was on my knees. We were weeping, all of us. And um, all of us started to look at our hands. And there was just gold dust um, shimmering. And it, it was truly a, an encounter that I will never forget. I will never forget the tangible presence that I felt outside. People think that God's glory is contained in a, a four walls of a church or in a box. But I promise you, if God can touch me in a car park, God can touch you anywhere. And so, I forgot where I was reading that thought. God's glory is so tangible. And I want to tell you the signs that take place for that. So the first one is a natural or physical sign or maybe a healing. In Exodus 34 verse 29, it says, Now it was so when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, Behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. After, afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as, as commandments all the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, they put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in with the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded and whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses that the skin of Moses face shone then Moses would put the veil on his face again and went to speak to him when you get in the glory everyone around you will see it it's something physical it's it's a change of appearance it's something that you go you, you look different and I, I've seen it before on like people who I had never like um 
I, I see them a couple months ago and I see them again. I'm like, you've been in the presence of God. You look different. You carry yourself different. Because the glory of the Lord catches on to you and it can't, no, no one can hide it. You know, like, I, I love, I had a vision. I was listening to the song, um, Show Me Your Face, Lord. Show me your face, Lord, that song. And um, I had the vision um, of Moses on the mountain. And, um, and it says that all of Israel saw um, what the glory of, when the glory of the Lord came. And I, Moses had to cover his face, but Christ dying on the cross removed the veil so that we can see him face to face. That it's not something to be afraid about. But it's something that we can walk with and go, Lord, show me your face. I want to see your glory and not be afraid of it. And so it will be a physical sign um, when the glory gets on you. It's also physical that you will, it says in 2 Chronicles 5 verse 13, that when the glory of the Lord filled the temple... Sorry, then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. You will not be able to minister or stand when the glory of the Lord comes into a place. It's something physical that happens. It, it's a, a physical sign that takes place when the glory of the Lord comes in. You cannot, you cannot stand. You have to worship him. You have to be on your knees and say, Lord, I'm in awe of what you're doing. And then, you know, healing. Healing takes place. You know, God is the healer. And um, I haven't got a scripture for it, but, you know, it's, it's evident <laughs> multiple times. The second um, thing that happens when the glory of the Lord fills a place is supernatural slash visible signs. You know, glory clouds, gold dust, jewels. You, you heard it in my story. Glory of the Lord comes in clouds, comes in, in gold dust. You know, heaven is made out of gold. And so Exodus 24, verse 16 to 18 says, Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called out to Moses of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. It's supernatural. And people, I've heard people ask me, oh, but... Um, how do you know it's, it's, a, it's um, a glory cloud? Isn't it just a cloud? You will know it's a glory cloud by the presence that comes with it. A cloud is, is something in the sky. When the glory cloud fills, it literally is like fog. And it literally comes all around you. And you'll be able to know that a glory cloud is coming. I was even saying to my dad today, I said, Dad, I'm preaching on the glory. How awesome would it be if a glory cloud came <laughs> into the service? And so I was like, Rabbi, <laughs> um, The third sign that will take place when the glory of the Lord fills a place is repentance. You know, I was reading this and I was actually am amazed. I, I've read it before, but I haven't seen it the way I saw it. But in Isaiah 6 verse 1, it says in 6 verse, yeah, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted seated on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seph seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying and they were calling to one another holy 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 is the lord god almighty the whole earth is full of his glory at the sound of their voices the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke woe to me i cried i'm ruined it's um he realized that he was a sinful man so conviction takes place. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. So not only did he realize that he was a sinner, he realized the people around him were sinners. God will give you revelation of not only with yourself, but other people that you can change. And so uncleanness, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the Sephirim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues on the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt was taken away and your sin atoned for. We'll come back in a moment. So 
repentance takes place, when God's glory fills the room, the Lord will start convicting you of things that you didn't even realize were a problem. You know, it's funny because we were in um, uh, Bible school yesterday and I sat down um, and I, I'm currently watching a series called Bones. Anyone, anyone know what Bones is? It's um, a series about a forensic anthropologist who basically studies when people have died. They, she studies their bones and then identifies them and gives them to the family. However, um, in, in the series, it actually rebukes the Bible quite a lot. And I was watching it and I was like, man, I'm getting irritated, but I'm just going to ignore it because I, I like the other stuff. Anyways, I sat down at Bible school and I heard the Lord say, Esther, you need to stop watching Bones. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And, um, and I was like, okay, Lord. And then um, uh, my friend Ron, who was sitting next to me, we did a prophetic activation of when you have to like look at the person and then... Um, ask the Lord something that highlights from their face. And I was like, it's super weird. But he noticed my lashes. And he said, it's the lashes are used to protect the things that come in your eyes. And he said that I feel like the Lord's telling you to protect your eyesight, protect what you watch, protect the things that are, are coming into your mind. And I knew that was my confirmation <laughs> to start watching Bones. Um, but I want to tell you, you know, the Lord will convict you, not in a, like, uh, in a judgmental way, but he does it in a loving way. And when God's glory comes, it's something sweet. It's something tangible. And the Lord will begin to speak to you. The Lord will begin to remind you of how, how um, he thinks of you, how, what he wants you to be, the future that he's given you, the plans and purposes for your life. And that does come with conviction and repentance, taking that step of going, Lord, forgive me. I was like, Lord, forgive me for watching this, for this doesn't glorify you. And so um, repentance. The fourth key, well, the fourth sign that will take place when God's glory fills a room is commissioning. And let's um, go back to Isaiah 6, verse 8. Then I heard, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will I go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. Not only did Isaiah see what sinner began to represent other people, but he began to get commissioned. In the glory of the Lord, the Lord will begin to, like, I almost, I almost feel it like it's like walking, Jesus just walking around the room and saying, who's going to go for me? Who, who's going who's gonna, to um, do that for me? Who's going to be sent out? Who's going to um, build a church? Who's going to have all these things that God's planned for you? And he begins to commission you in that work and say, who's going to go? And our response should be, here am I, send me. Send me, Father. Send me. I want to be commissioned to do the work that you've created us for. Hallelujah. Amen. The fifth, um, I'm doing it again. I'm preaching in 15 minutes. <laughs> Forgive me. But the fifth thing that will happen when, glory, um, when uh, God's glory manifests itself is transformation. And I was searching the definition of transformation means a marked change of form, nature, or appearance. Um, you know, the disciples spent so much time with Jesus that they had no idea which one was Jesus. And like Jesus had to kiss Jesus on the cheek and, you know, tell them this one's Jesus, you know, not this guy or this guy, this guy. And so, you know, transformation, it's, it's a change. It's a, a, a transfer. It's a I don't want to use the word transformation because it doesn't explain it. But like, if someone's next to you, no, 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 let me say, imagine there was two of you and one of you came in the glory of God and one of you wasn't in the glory of God. The person that's going to look transformed is a person that did something different to what other people have done. And so um, transformation, you know, I, I talk about Nigeria a lot because it was a, a huge significant thing in my life that took place. But when I got back, I, I um, watched um, a, a YouTube video of when I led worship eight months before I went. And um, I was like, oh my goodness, can someone take this down? <laughs> and I watched um, a YouTube live from when I got back from Nigeria and I watched them side to side. And I said, my God. How have you changed me from that to that like this? 
And I began to just thank God for what he had done because there was a huge change in my appearance, in the way I carried myself, in the way I walked. I was, I was joyful when I came back. I, something had changed in me. And, um, you know, there was a, a shift and a transformation in my life. My dad picked me up from the airport. And he said, wow, you, you changed. You, you look transformed. You look different. And so, <clears throat> yeah, in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 7, we see this. But, the minis- but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadily at-, at the face of Moses because the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry, ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds... Hold on, let's go down a little bit. Um, I'm not, uh, da, 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 sorry. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But with we all, with unveiled faces, beholding in as a mirror of the glory of the Lord, and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the spirit of the Lord. You know, when you understand the glory of God, you begin to see in a different way. That veil was removed. You'll be able to see in the spirit differently. You'll be able to see people differently. You'll be able to go, I like what's on you. Or like, not, not that you're going to be judgmental, but I mean like you're going to see things of people. You're going to be able to read their spirits. You're going to be able to see things clearly. And then you'll look in the mirror and you'll say, wow. I I, want to look in the mirror and be like, I look just like Jesus. I want to look in the mirror and be like, I'm so transformed to the point where I've spent so much time with Jesus that that people can't even, even though I'm a woman and he's a man, I'm I'm still like him. I'm still beholding like him. I'm still, um, uh, um, I'm in the same image as as him. Say amen, amen, amen. I believe in order to get God's glory, yes, we have to build altars, but we also have to tear down altars. And the second altar that I want to talk about is Gideon's altar. In um, Judges 6, verse 24, it says, So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it's still in um, opera and abyssalites. I don't know how to say that word. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull, the second bull of the seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image that you shall cut down. So Gideon not only built an altar, but he tear down an altar to build a, an effective altar unto the Lord. And so, I mean, later on in that passage, I was, I was just reading it. And I was just looking at what happens after he did that. And I'm going to summarize it. But basically, the people, he did it at the night time so people wouldn't see him. And people were like, who has done this? And he started, and, and um, his father was like, get your son out. But he's done this, and you're going to die. 
And like, I want to tell you that the altars that you tear down, the enemy is going to come at you for attacking that altar because he doesn't want to tear you that down. And so you're going to get attacked, but I want to tell you it's for a good reason because the Lord wants you to build an altar unto him, a meeting place with him so that you can experience the glory of God to fill in that altar. And so, you know, I want to ask the question, what generational things do you need to tear down? What is, what is above you? What is your father or your mother or your grandfather or your great-great-grandfather? What are their altars that you haven't realized that they have, they have built? And um, we were in um, Bible school um, uh, maybe like a couple months ago, and it was one of our Saturday days, and we were doing an in the healing session. And uh, my, um, my, my dad, Apostle John, had told me that our family had a history of Freemasonry. And he was like, but I broke that off, I broke that. And I was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. Anyways, we did this prayer of <laughs> Freemasonry. And um, apparently when you do Freemasonry prayers, and like if you have a, a history of Freemasonry, then you'll begin to yawn. Anyways, I was standing in the corner. I'm not even joking. I'm standing over there. And I'm doing these prayers. And I had to turn around because I was yawning. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I break this right now. My dad told me that he finished this. I'm going to finish this right here, right here now. So that my children don't have to do the same prayers and start yawning. And so, you know, that was from not my father, but my, my great, great grandfather. The generations that I, have, I haven't even met them. And they're affecting my life. And so we need to tear down their altars so that they're not evident in our life. I want an altar unto God. I want my children to say, I, ha I know my mom has built an altar that I can receive. What you, what you build and what you create, your children have the inheritance that you give them. And so I want to make sure personally that I'm not building an altar or I'm not stepping into a way that they're going to receive and go, why did you, why did you do that? I want to build an altar unto God. I want to build an altar where it's a meeting place where the glory of God can come in, where glory clouds can fill my house, when glory clouds can fill my prayer closet, where gold dust can receive wherever and whenever I am, in my car, or I don't have a car, but on my motorbike, or whatever it is, but I want to see something supernatural in my life. And... Not only that, but what are the altars in our nation? What are the altars in, in other nations? If you want to be a missionary, why don't you do some research? What altars are they doing that you want to step into that nation and go, I'm going to break that altar right now. And I'm going to build you a new altar where you can meet with God. And so I was thinking about this when I was making my notes. And I believe that LGBTQ is an altar that isn't for God. You know, I feel like we've, Western churches have, have been too loving and, and too nice and, and preached, oh, God is love, love, love. God is, God is lovely and God is nice and, and he's going to respect that. But we also see the other side of God where he says, but you shouldn't idolize anything but me. And I feel like LGBTQ has become an idol that, that we've gone, oh, but you know, this is okay and this is okay, but what does my Bible say? And so, um, you know, it's things like that, that we need to walk around and go, I break this off right now. In Wimbledon, I break that altar right now in Jesus' name. And we're going to build a church instead of an LGBTQ club. We're going to build a, a church instead of that um, LGBTQ paved walk. I, Lord, I break it right now in Jesus' name. We cancel that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyways, things in your house. Maybe it's something that you don't even realize that you have in your house. It might be a book. It might be um, something that you don't realize. Dream catchers, wh whatever it is. Those small things that you need to get rid of. Walk around your house going, Lord, remind me of things. You know, I, I heard of someone who, I was, we were talking about him and began to get rid of stuff in the house. And um, we thought we got rid of everything. And the next day we're like, oh, what about this? We have to get rid of this. We have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of this. And so the Lord will begin to keep on reminding you of things that you need to get rid of, things that are going to um, affect your house. You, you want your house to walk in and go, this is a home. 
it's a, it's in the house. We were at Clapton's um, worship night on Friday, and um, Peter, um, a minister, um, he's connected with Pastor Nilda, if you know him, and he was talking about uh, it's not a house, it's meant to be a home. And a home is a time of rest, and a house is just four walls. And, you know, I want to step into my house and say, this is home. This is, there's a peace in this house. I um, went into um, someone's house a few years ago now. And um, I was over there. I can't remember why I was there. But I was there and I sat on their sofa and I was like, I don't really want to leave. Like, there's just such peace in this, in this home. And so I want my home and I want your home to feel like a home. And so we need to get rid of things that aren't of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to ask Cheryl to come up um, before I pray. Um, and um, yeah, give a round of applause for Cheryl. Don't we love her? Thank you, Esther. Yeah, we just want to um, pray for some people now because there was a word spoken in the prayer meeting this morning, which was that today the Lord wants to tear down some altars. And um, when that word was given, I knew what Esther was uh, preaching about tonight. And I thought, that's for tonight, that's for tonight. I really believe that that is going to happen now. Um, And the other thing was that the Lord this week spoke to me very specifically about the passage that Esther just shared from Judges 6. I don't know if we can put that back up again. Um, Judges 6, verse 25. And it says, now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. And I was thinking about what is this wooden image that's beside it? Because we focus on the altar of Baal, but there's an image that is beside it. And when you do a little bit of digging into this, it's called an Asherah pole. And it was like a support that went alongside the altar of Baal. And I felt the Lord saying that when we tear down altars, actually there's a whole support system that needs to come down as well. It's not just a case of turning down the altar, but there are things that we believe or things that we have inherited stuff that has happened to us that are the underlying cause of why we've built the altar. So in your life, it might be that there's an altar to work. There's an altar to sexual sin. Um, There's an altar to um, love of money in an unhealthy way. There's an altar to um, worshipping, yeah, worshipping idols, occult. There's a worship of whatever it is that goes before Jesus Christ, as Esther has just been sharing. But there'll also be, in your life, a reason as to why you've made that the altar in your life. Now, it might be that you've had some past experience, whether it's been something abusive, something uh, back in your childhood, which has then... Um, if you like, made a, a, a weakness there that you've turned to something and made it the object of your devotion rather than the Lord because it provides some kind of false comfort. Or you've, put, you've thrown yourself into work and that has become the altar in your life because you're striving for perfection, you're striving um, for status, you're striving just to feel good about yourself. And in order to tear down that altar of Baal, we need to ask the Lord as well to tear down the supports, the support that is holding it in place, the pole of Asherah. So we want to pray for some people now. We believe there's the word that's really been spoken over the house for tonight. It's been confirmed there. It's been confirmed in Esther's message, spoken to me in the week. And then just before the prayer meeting <laughs> this evening... Um, somebody also prayed Judges 6 and chose to read that out in the prayer meeting. So I don't know what is going on in your life. Can we all, all stand?
Yeah, Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that every altar that isn't of you will break right now. Father, we take authority over everything that's come in through past, through um, children, through trauma, through anything that we've idolized. Lord, we break that altar right now. That Those, um, those um, things that are holding that altar up, I command it to break right now. That the altar will fall and that a new altar will arise. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'll begin to remind us of things. Give us um, visions of, of, of altars that we don't even realize that aren't of you and we demand you to to just shift it right now Lord I pray and I command every altar to fall right now every generational altar to fall right now we 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 break that we 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 do, we just um come against that altar our father's altars our father's father's altars that aren't of you and we build a new one unto you we build that meeting place unto you father we pray right now Jesus name that everything that isn't of you will leave right now Lord I pray that that door is open from for Satan Lord I pray that you close every door that we've left open for people to walk through Lord I pray right now in the name of Jesus that for you begin to shut doors that aren't from you shut opportunities that aren't from you and begin to open new ones Lord I pray right now that you'll begin to open altars new altars that are for your glory new altars that will produce your glory Jesus Jesus we welcome you Jesus we invite you Jesus we want that meeting place that will produce your glory Father and so I want to invite you I want to invite you to come if you say I've got I feel like I've got this generational altar or I've got altars that aren't up to God that need to break I want to invite you to the front I want to pray for you just pray in the spirit thank you Jesus thank you Lord we command it to shift right now yeah break right now
There is power. 
tonight, Lord. Lord, if there's still anything in us, Lord, where we put you above, or we put other things above you, Lord, I pray for the conviction of your spirit to fall now. Oh, Lord, we just, we just come before you in repentance of all those times where we don't put you first. Lord, where we build altars, where we build support structures, rather than turning to you, we turn to other things. Lord, in this moment, we just come before you in in your presence. We just repent. We choose to turn away. We turn away from all that is not right, all that is not pure, all that is not holy. And we turn to you. Be the center again of our lives, Lord Jesus. Be the center. get down on our knees. Maybe we need to just just come into repentance where we've not been right, where we've not put the Lord first in our lives, where we've looked to other things, where we've, where we've not prioritized him, where we've not given him our first fruits. We try to just fit him in to our busy lives, fit him into our schedules. Just in this moment, just in this atmosphere, just tell him, tell him, just tell him how you feel. Just turn away, just it's a chance just to lay it all down and turn back to him to make him number one again in our lives.
Father, have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Lord, we just thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, we thank you for the work that you've started. We thank you for the work that you've done tonight in lives in this place. Lord, we thank you for the hearts turned back to you. Lord, we thank you that you've torn down altars. Lord, we thank you that you've turned down support structures. And Lord, I just pray for every single person in this place. Lord, that as they go from here, as they go from here tonight, Lord, that they will not resurrect the altars to things that are not of you. But Lord, I pray that you will just fill us with your spirit now. Lord, that your spirit will just equip us and empower us and convict us to keep on the straight and narrow path. Just to want to, just remain holy, remain pure. Lord, I just pray that you will stir that hunger within us and that desire within us to be more like you. Just to be hungry for you. Just to grow more and more like you. As we grow closer to you, we just reflect your glory. Lord, I just pray that when we go from here, Lord, that as we pray, as we seek your face, Lord, that we may know your glory. Just as Esther said, it's not meant for just inside the church building in this beautiful atmosphere that we have now. But Lord, I just pray that you would just touch each and every one of us as we go from here in our own homes, and even out on the streets, in our workplaces. May we experience your glory.
Spirit's just touching people over the room. Just, just keep your gaze on him. will be hanging around afterwards so do feel you can come forward or if you just want to stay and linger a bit longer in the presence of God then feel to, free to do that as well but I'm just going to pray for you before we go so Lord we just thank you again for everything you've done tonight we just thank you for your sweet presence we thank you Lord God that you've torn down altars we thank you Lord that strongholds have been broken tonight and Lord, we thank you that we go away from here changed. That we are not the same person who walked in as when we walk out. So Lord God, I just pray for everyone in this room tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you would just seal by the power of your Holy Spirit everything that you've done in their lives tonight. I pray, Lord God, that when they leave this place, when they go into their homes, into their workplaces, Lord, that not only they will notice the difference, not only they will know that they have been in your presence, but Lord, that those around them too may notice that something is different about them. And Lord God, I just pray that they will be bold enough to testify, bold enough to say, this is why I am different. This is what took place tonight, that I spent time in the presence, time in the glory. So Lord God, I just... Uh, 
we just thank you. We just thank you for what you've done. And I just pray blessing over everyone in here that you'll bring them back again safely next week, Lord, with testimonies to share of what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, let's give the Lord a clap. See you all, not this time next week, because there's no six o'clock service, but see you all 11 o'clock or Good Friday.